Hi guys! Today I'm going to quickly show you how I upload um, images to Cricut Design. How I kind of, I guess, edit them on the Cricut Design. I have been asked lately how and where do I get my images. Most of the images are free because I googled them and um, I kind of edit them using my Cricut, Cricut Design. There's a bunch of websites out there that you could, uh, just by giving them your email address, like signing up with your email address, you can get like free images designed by other people and it's just for personal use as long as you don't sell the items like some images if you find them and when you're cutting them they don't have that smooth cutting setting i'm gonna show you how uh, how to fix that and i'm going to try to talk you through it as i'm doing it so i hopefully that helps instead of just music playing in the background and and this is what I'm going to make today. These are the logos I'm going to work with. At the end of this video, I will also show you step by step how to apply this iron on to your onesie, your fabric, your t-shirts. All right, let's begin. Open up your Cricut Design and then you're going to go on Google and type in what image you want and usually after typing in what image i want i always type in either svg or i type in uh the word vector so right now i'm just gonna try the svg one then click on images and usually click on the first one so see these little squares this means that the background is clear. Watch, as I drag it to save it, there's no background. This is good. So these are the kind of images you want to use. So I'm gonna save that. Now this one, it has a white background. These images are good as well because you could just delete the background on the Cricut Design, it's really easy. If it's one color background, it's really easy to do that. Now, see this image? Look how tiny it is. And you can see by numbers right here, anything that's like under, under 300, it's not gonna be good quality. It's very small, it's gonna be very pixelated. And see how it's like a circular shape? When you're gonna go in a cut setting, it's not going to be a straight line. It's gonna be like weird zigzaggy line. And that's just not gonna be good for your cutting. It's just gonna look ugly. Other ways to do it to get the best images is to, if, especially if working with logos, is just to go on the actual website. Like for example, if you're working with Disney, try to go on the Disney website, see if they have their logos there. If you're working with like football teams, if you go to, um, if you Google football team NFL logos, it will literally go to the website and they'll have all the logos there and they're very good files, like good uh, quality files. Another way to find images is go on Pinterest. Honestly, I, I mostly use Pinterest as my Google. And type in your stuff here. Okay, let's go on and start uploading. All right. So this is with the clear. And you just click complex. I always click complex and you already have no background. You don't have to do anything. You just click continue. And just save it. Now this is with the white background. So just click complex and you're going to click the select and erase tool and just gonna click and erases that background and just erase all the little white parts. And after you do that, make sure you click preview and it will show you how it will cut the image out. Now, as you can see, look how it has little, little zigzags and dots and stuff. That is not a clear image to cut at all. 
it's not gonna cut as smooth. So you do not want this image. Let's try simple. Do the same thing. Let's zoom in. Now if you do a simple, it makes it a little bit more smoother. So you could save this. I'm not going to, I still don't like how this is. Now, if you find an actual SVG image, I got this off of this logo's website. Once you drag it, it automatically comes to this screen and you just save it. And the cool thing is that once you insert that SVG file, look, each letter is by itself, but you could move the image and you could just copy this. Each letter and then you could separate them. It's kind of cool. So I'm just going to keep this here. I'm going to upload some more. In a circle, SVG. Okay, so this is what I want. And I'm gonna save it, even though it's not that good of a file. Insert our images. So we're gonna insert all of these. Okay. So this is the word I'm going to keep. This is what I want it to cut out because it's going to be really clean lines. So I'm just going to move that here and hide it for now. Now, I want it in a circle. Change this to a cut setting. See this little printer? You're going to click on it and this will pop up. So you're just going to click cut. It does not matter what color it pops up. It's just whatever is easier for you to work. And then this is kind of to separate them, but what color, what color you're going to cut it out? Like what well, wine color it's going to be on your mat or what iron on, etc. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, anyway, I do not want this image, nor do I want the circle. It is not perfect. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to insert a shape, same one circle. See this image, let's make it an even number for now, easier to work, so it's gonna be five. So we're gonna make the circle five. And put it right in front. And you could select them by just going like that. So I just click my mouse and drag, and it selects both of the images, as you could see on the right. And I'm gonna align them center. And I'm gonna duplicate the circle. And this circle, first one, I'm going to click click on it and click Arrange and move to back. So that way I could see what I'm working with. Now I'm going to move this circle in the front and I'm just kind of going to make it smaller. And let's, I'm going to make a different color so you can see it. All right. Now let's make it a little bigger. Okay, I think this is a good size. Okay, now you're going to get this image out of there. Select these two together. Align center, so it's right in the middle. Then you're going to go to the bottom right corner, and there's this slice. Make sure these two images are selected together, and then you're going to click slice. And this is what it does to it. So you're just gonna delete the circles, you don't need them. And now you have a perfect circle. So I don't want this image at all because look how stupid it looks. So I'm just gonna delete it. And then on this one, I want the words separated from the logo. So I'm gonna insert my shape I'm just going to work with the square. I'm going to unlock it so I can move it. 
and it's going to cover just the words. So now I'm going to select these two. Another way to select the images is click on the first image, then hold down shift on your keyboard and click on the second image. And these two are selected. You're going to go back to this slice, bottom right corner. You're going to click slice and it's going to separate it. So you're just going to delete all of these. You don't need them. And since I want to work with this one, I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to move this to the circle. Select two. Select both of these images, align, center. You could also make it a little bigger if you like. I'll, you have to select both of them and align in center. Now that this image is complete, you're just going to either attach it. When you attach the image, if you want to, let's say, make this part smaller again, you click on it, you could detach it, and you could work with it again. Now, if you're done completely and you don't want to mess with it or move it around, you weld it. And once you click on it, you can't undo it unless you click undo. If I click undo, it will undo the image, but it will also undo all the other steps you did after that. Okay. And now this one, I just like how it is. I'll make it a little bigger. If you want it to be the same size as this, so this is five inches. You go to the width and click five. It's the same. Press on it, select, press on it. Hold down the shift key on your keyboard. Press on the other image. Both are selected. Click on your align. It's on top left-ish corner. And I'm just going to align, not center, because if I click center, this image is going to go there. Um, I don't want that, so I'm going to do it. Select, align, left. Align, right. It's, it's the same width. In inches so it's even now now if I want to cut it out just like this I'm gonna select it either attach it or weld I'm just gonna weld it and I'm gonna make it once you click on make it this is how it's gonna be if this is your vinyl or paper or anything like that leave it as is and cut it out if it's an iron-on every single iron-on it has to be mirrored so you have to click on this little button and it turns green and now it's mirrored. See how it turns it like, as if you would look in the mirror. So it's mirrored. I like to save my vinyls as much as I can, especially iron-ons because they're kind of pricey. So see this little gap? It's, I don't like that. It's, that's how much vinyl it's wasting. So I'm gonna go back and see how I can't detach it? I have to click undo because I weld the image. So I'm going to undo it. All right, so I'm just going to weld this. And so I'm going to have two separate images. And you want them on the same mat. So one way to do it, you just go in your color sink right here. And then you just drag it. And they're both going to be on one mat. And you make it and see how it's all separated. You mirror it and I'm going to move this one over here as close as possible. So it's going to save me that little piece of iron on. And then I'm going to continue. And it's going to tell you to set the material. I have my favorites on here, so I am going to do a glitter iron on. And it's right here. If you don't have it as your favorite, you just click on Browse All Materials. Type in Iron. And then it has all your iron-ons. I'm using glitter one, so here it is. I'm not really going to go into it. But 
depending on what brand glitter you iron on, sometimes you have to go on material settings and you search for that one. It's right here. And then you could edit it. Um, I know it was higher, I did lower it because uh, my pre cut blade, for some reason, it would cut through the, the clear plastic backing. So I had to lower the that amount. It's not as high for mine. But this is going to be a totally different video. I'll talk about that later. Anyway, so you're just going to pick your glitter iron on. Now get your onesie or your t-shirt. Whatever you're going to iron it onto. And measure it. First, you measure it the width. So like for this one, a good size would be five inches. You don't want it bigger than that. You don't want it like going to the little sleeves because then that's going to be in the armpits and you won't see the image. So like a good one and a half inch away from it. Let's see if it starts here, ends here. That's five. This is your main measurement. Now this way, I think seven inches is good. Our main thing is five inches width. this I'm just gonna have this on custom I know there is a setting for iron on on here but honestly I don't ever pretty much use these settings I always use the custom one I'm going to cut this out as closely to the image as possible so I save the most iron on I possibly can for other images and now it's time to weed it out so the cut setting was a little strong and it cut through but that's okay since I am going to iron it on myself it's gonna work out perfectly fine you're using the Krika brand iron-on vinyls this part will be very sticky which I love I did try other brands they have good quality iron-ons as well it's just this part is not as sticky but it doesn't really matter honestly I just prefer it to be so sticky so it's gonna look like this and once you flip it over to non sticky part it's gonna be the right side up. I don't want this to be with that, so I am going to cut it out. Get your iron and turn it on to the highest setting on your iron. The highest setting is always cotton and or linen. And if you have a steam iron, please turn off your setting to zero or off. No steam. Once the iron is heated to the correct temperature, you are going to iron your onesie, your t-shirt or your fabric, whatever you're gonna place the iron on to, and just iron it. Get your iron on. If it's not placed where you want it to be, peel it off and you can move it around and place it wherever you would like it to be. That's why I like it when it's sticky because it sticks. Now this part is very important. What I use for my iron on is a regular P90 
piece of paper. This is a regular printer paper, A1 paper. When I iron it on, it does not burn, it does not go through. But I do not leave my iron just sitting there. I glide over it and press it kind of hard. And just move the iron back and forth, back and forth, circles. But you do have to kind of press it hard. And just do it for like 30 to a minute. I usually stop. And then I lift the paper. I put it down again. And I do it again for 30 seconds. Once it's done, you have to let it cool down. Now, this part. I place the paper over it again. And I iron it on again. But this time, I only do it for like five seconds, take it off. I'm just kind of go, ooh, it's kind of hot. Yeah, just let it cool down. But I'm just kind of going to go like this, so no corners are lifting. I'm just going to do it lightly. Ooh, it's hot. All right. So if nothing is lifting, it's good to go. And that's it. Look how cute this looks. Usually what you would do is look for the tag and look for washing instructions. Turn garment inside out, machine wash cold with light colors. Anyway, tumble dry a medium, warm iron if needed. So. This is not just for this kind of fabric, but for everything. What Once you have your iron on, always flip it inside out, throw it in your washer, and the setting for the water temperature is cold. I would say the spin, if you have that option on there, um, always put low spin. I always put low spin. Dry it on tumble low and low heat. That way it will make it last longer. All right, guys, and that's all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell button to get notified whenever I post new videos. Also, check out my little Etsy shop, www.etsy.com slash shop slash star. By the way, all these links will be down below in the description. And in all my videos, guys, please check out the description if you're actually making something that's shown in the video. The description explains even more and even has products listed that I used. And also, I do have a little Instagram account and I do post a lot of cute little stuff on there, like stuff I made. I don't really do all the tutorials and all the stuff I make. Be you can check it out. It's www.instagram.com slash star. And if you have any questions, guys, comment below. You know me, I will literally try to answer every single question there is and if you have like a lot of questions you could actually a lot of people um message me on etsy to ask me questions you could also dm me on my instagram i will get to the instagram quicker than etsy but i will get to both of them and i will try to answer all of your questions all right guys thank you so much again for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it